You're listening to a BGE podcast. Friends and family gather round and fire up the barbecue. Let the smoke waft and float, that's what we're gonna do. You can't deny there's nothing like friends and family and food. Don't sit still, pull out your grill, we're gonna have a barbecue. Welcome back to another episode of the Blind Grilling Experience. We got some special guests joining us today with an awesome YouTube channel and some amazing cooks that uh, they're actually going to be sharing with us a recipe as well. Stay tuned. You ain't cooking, fire up the barbecue. Fire up the barbecue. Welcome back to the Blind Grilling Experience. My name is Chris Peltz. I am the most interesting griller in the world. And today we've got some of the most interesting travelers in the world. The Gilkeys, Sarah and William Gilkey from Gilkey's Limited Adventures on YouTube. Guys, how you doing today? Fantastic. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Chris. Absolutely. Yeah, good Good to have you guys on here. You guys definitely got my attention with some of your videos, especially some of the cooks that you have done, uh, and we'll definitely get into that. But why don't you, first of all, uh, I know, William, you uh, have limited vision. Uh, you've been losing your sight. If you don't mind, tell us a little bit about that, but then... Um, uh, and then if you guys want to get into how you got started on the YouTube channel as well. Well, sure. I'll take that first one and then kick it over to my wife. I am legally blind as of last October. That all started about eight years ago, probably. I went on a weekend trip with my wife to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, which we'll talk about. We travel a lot. We like to do staycations and local vacations and things, but nonetheless, I met up with my family there. They're from Missouri. So we kind of met in the middle and we had a great time. And then I came home and woke up the next day on a Monday and I couldn't clearly see out of one of my eyes. And it turns out that it started out with a cataract. So I had a cataract, had cataract surgery. A couple of weeks later, I had a second cataract surgery. I later tore a retina. I found out also that I have diabetic retinopathy and neovascular glaucoma, a scratched cornea, double vision, like a lot of things that happened. That all culminated over the years, kind of something happened all the time, it seemed like, and several surgeries and little procedures and things. As of last October, I did cross that threshold over into legal blindness, and the cause of my blindness is the neovascular glaucoma I have a field of vision within the ranges that qualify as legal blindness. So I did get to, as a positive, got to check the box that said I'm legally blind when I filled out my taxes this year. <laughs> there you, yeah, that's right. There's a few positives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> that's great. That's, yeah, that's great. And uh, <clears throat> with that, though, um, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you well, let me ask you this, and I, I don't know because this, you know, we've we've talked a little bit, but not as much about this particular aspect of things. But um, you know, did it did it take much time? Because it doesn't seem like there's much time between this happening and you guys starting your YouTube channel. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting, and, and like I said, I'll have Sarah kind of talk more about the channel and how it launched and things. But I've got. A, really good buddy down in Arkansas, just uh, not that far from you, really. And he's a, a pastor down there. And, and we were talking about kind of finding purpose. Like all of my hobbies were with my eyes in the past. I like to read and um, all kinds of things, bird watch, hiking, that sort of thing. And it kind of hit that kind of crisis moment when I went blind, like thinking, wow, is life over as I know it? What am I going to do? All of that. And my faith is important to me. I know you're also a pastor, a preacher. So I talked to him. He, he was kind of a good pastor friend of mine, try, like trying to find purpose, what I can do with that. And he recommended that I think about doing a podcast or come find some little niche where I can have some service like that. And um, 
I didn't really feel like that's my gift so much. I thought the technology piece was a little daunting to me and coming up with topics. That's why I really admire guys like you that can do that. But I did kind of connect with my wife and we thought about maybe there's a way we can use some of the things we enjoy and launch that into some videos. And I'll just kick it over to you, honey, and kind of say how you thought that progressed. I mean, we got ma married a little later in life. We've only been married for 10 years or 11 years. So we, when we got married, I had said, like, let's not wait till we have the money or have the health or we're retired or whatever to do things. Let's, let's live now. And we've always lived like that. We've always gone on a few vacations a year, even just like weekend trips, whatever. And we really enjoyed that. So things have been changing over the last eight years of exactly how we're going to go on vacation. Like we're looking for things like paved boardwalks and how many stairs are there and, you know, like things like that. So we just kind of thought, you know, maybe YouTube be, would be the way to go to help others with those same issues. You know, we're, we're coming across them. If we've gone somewhere, why not tell people what we've found so far? That along with just like really liking to have fun at home, you know, like mm -hmm. I always tell people like you can love to travel and you can love to be a homebody. Like it's possible to do both, you know, and we do like we are homebodies sometimes and we like to do fun things at home. And that's, uh, you know, how we come up with some of these ideas like the 50 state meals. And, yeah. and honestly, yeah. part of that was us trying to find the legs of our channel, so to speak. We were a little maybe too niche when we were only looking at blind travel. We didn't find as much engagement as we wanted. Or there, There's all kinds of blindness, you know, across the spectrum. Some people that wouldn't even possibly dream of trying to travel internationally or anything else. And so um, we were just looking at ways to kind of boost our views and have fun. And so Sarah had come up with that idea of uh, a, a popular state food every week for a year. And she just made some shorts with that. And that's kind of how we saw some engagement. And then we thought, well, why don't we just do some cooking and some crazy stuff and travel stuff. And I don't know if we really have a theme as much as we want to, but we're sure having a good time. <laughs> well, yeah. And I think that's more the important thing than anything else, you know, and uh, desiring that good time. And, and I know... Uh, you did a uh, a smoke, right? Because you did for Missouri, and and you being originally from Kansas City, you did uh, a pork shoulder and did some pulled pork. Um, yep. And so, what what kind of smoker do you have? Well, I, yeah, I have a really nice one because my parents surprised me with it five or six years ago. They gave me an Oklahoma Joe's yeah. of like canister offset, offset smoker. Mm -hmm. I used to smoke with a propane a multiple shelf smoker and then one day a Lowe's truck came to our house and they <laughs> unloaded a really nice smoker that I'd have probably never bought myself so we do yeah. use the Oklahoma Joe's offset smoker with the uh, charcoal and, and wood chips right yeah yeah those are nice Th that's very nice and uh and that pulled pork boy that uh sound like it turned out really good too <laughs> yeah yeah so so yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry. No, that you're good. Um, so what? Because your your YouTube channel is um, kind of the mix of the traveling and the and the food, and I love how you're putting those together, right? With the um, you know the the fifty states of, of food each week for a year um, for uh, you know that represents the state. Um, maybe not the state food, but still something that you would think of from there. Uh, but with that, because I want to get to that, and and you guys have a recipe that you're going to be sharing as well. But so far in your travels, right? Because I I think I first jumped on board with your YouTube channel when you were making the trip out to San Francisco and okay. back. Um, and so what? Where where's been your favorite place? And where's been your least favorite place that you've been to so far? Not that it's been bad necessarily, but just, you know, someplace you really want to go back or someplace that, yeah, you don't want to go back. Well, we're definitely going to tie on number one, I, I think. Um, like I said before, my hobbies in the past were, were visual mostly. And I would have to say, I'm going to guess this is Sarah's too. She can speak for herself. But Yellowstone yeah, sure, would be 100%. my favorite yeah. for sure. Yeah. A uh, very close second though would have been Muir Woods, looking up at mm. those redwood trees. That was yeah. very amazing. 
Yeah. So that would be number one for me. What you? For yeah, you? sure. I'll yeah. let you say the least favorite. I don't know. Do you know them? I don't have anything that I've absolutely hated, but sure. we have traveled to some uh, lake house up kind of right after COVID. We went to a lake house just north of us in central Wisconsin, and nothing was really open. They did have a nice pond that we could fish in, mm -hmm. but we were pretty limited in what we were able to do just because COVID had shut everything down. And I think just because of those aspects of it that was probably my least favorite and it wasn't bad yeah I, what i always tell people on our videos or when i talk to them you, you have about as good a time as you make your mind up sure you. yeah absolutely so even a bad trip is pretty good i mean we're going to missouri next weekend and it's gonna be august in missouri i don't yeah. think that's, that's <laughs> yeah. fine. I was, that's what I was going to say. I went, we went fishing in Missouri in the nineties or something. And yeah. I got sugar bites. That would probably be my worst. Thing. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So, we're, we're 97 here today. So down yeah, in Southwest Missouri. Yeah, so that would be my worst. And this yeah. is for a family reunion. So we're going to be sitting outside. You can imagine mm. how great that's going to feel. Yeah. Well, maybe the cold front come through. So yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Well, yeah, that'll be great. Any, any, uh, trips that you're really looking forward to maybe somewhere you haven't been that you want to go to? Well, we have one on the books that we're waiting for. We had such a crazy trip. Uh, I don't want to overplug things, but if you do see our Amtrak trip video, you'll see that it was a pretty, uh, interesting excursion thanks to all the weather issues. And mm. because of that, we got a uh, kind of a re-voucher to travel on Amtrak. And so in January, we're going to use that, okay. uh, maybe early February, to go down to New Orleans on the famous train, the city of New Orleans. Yeah. So that's kind of fun, you know. And so that I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to eat some beignets and hopefully mm. some good Cajun food. Eat some alligator. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. On, on the trip. I mean, on the mm -hmm. on kind of our itinerary for things we're doing. And gotcha. then I don't think we have anything else big planned for Not now, yet. but a lot of little small things. We're going down to Missouri a few times, including down and in just south of your neck of the woods. We'll be in the Branson area. Yeah, yeah, North okay. River, all of that. Yeah. So, trout fishing. I've never been trout fishing. We'll be so there yeah. in September. And awesome. then every October, we look forward to our own local trip where we go to the fall colors in Wisconsin. It's yeah. so beautiful up here. We'll go to the Manaqua area. It'll just be gorgeous. Sure. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now, when you do all the, this traveling, uh, are, are are you inspired by these trips with some of the food that you've done? Or has this really, the, the food aspect of it been completely separate from what you've done? We always try to find interesting foods where we go. So I think there's always mm -hmm. going to be a correlation. We, we just like to do crazy fun stuff. So when we find out something's popular somewhere, we either want to find a way to try way up north off of um, Lake Superior in Wisconsin. They had uh, whitefish livers and they say that these were swimming in Lake Superior the night before. Well, you can get whitefish livers. Yeah. Like, who even likes livers? Yeah, like, yeah. Eating them from a from a fish, you know? So, so we had to try them. Yeah, we yeah. tried that. And if there's anything ever weird on a menu, you pretty much bet we're going to at least get an appetizer size and give it a whirl because yeah. we like that kind of interesting stuff. You I know, had mustard ice cream up here one time. We had oh, a wow. mustard yeah. museum and uh, <laughs> it was World Mustard Day and they had mustard ice cream. And I gave that a crack and I that's all I needed of that, but it was still yeah. fun. <laughs> like everything, we went to um, Wyoming and we had uh, those... Uh, the original, mountain you know, oysters. Yeah, mountain oysters. <laughs> they call okay, them the yeah. original sack. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, yeah. Like, yeah, we want to try something local. And we'll look it up, like, what's local in that area. Because, you know, it's fun, too. Yeah, sure. There's something called Chislet or something like that in, in South, South Dakota. Dakota. We tried that. I was looking to get a rattlesnake bratwurst, but the place was closed. So, yeah, I like trying all that kind of stuff. I it, got you. It is connected with our travel. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So what's been the favorite food so far that you guys have had? Um, 100%, you know, in San Francisco. It's like a fish, like a seafood stew, chopino. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
for me. What about you? I'm going to always go. I'm kind of a red meat and potatoes guy. I'm, my, oddly enough, my favorite food is hamburgers. So I could tell you McDonald's and probably be serious, <laughs> but but no, seriously, the um, uh, a, uh, I had a really nice uh, bison rib. I had a wild game plate in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and it had a bison ribeye on it, and that was pretty tasty. Yeah. Uh, as far as state meals are concerned, it changes depending because they just keep getting better sometimes. But I think it's going to be pretty hard to beat Indiana's pork tenderloin. Sarah made that handmade. That was pretty good. I understand I was sick for one of these meals, and my brother-in-law got to eat it instead of me, but a main lobster roll. Yeah, those are good. And they said yeah. that was pretty good. I'm going to have to take the yeah, word for it. Those are probably my two favorite, too. Yeah, that the main lobster roll just came across my feed um, this morning, I think. So it was the first time yeah, I'd seen think. the the short anyway. Yeah. yeah. So we're, so. A little bit behind. we're a little bit behind yeah. on YouTube. I think we're in the, we're in the ends right now. We're in New Jersey May. this week. So. Oh, yeah, in our life where, yeah, yeah, Monday or Tuesday we'll have New Jersey. And we're going to have a pork roll for New Jersey. It's kind of a really well-known thing out there. And we ordered one of those, had it shipped here. We're kind of looking forward to trying that. I got you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, um, real quick then, let's let's get into – well, okay, so those have been main dishes. Has there been any desserts that have really stood out to you? I'm a sweets kind of guy, even though I haven't had any in a while. <laughs> I don't think we've done many desserts. We did peach hand pies with Georgia, and we yeah. did chess bars. Chess bars from Kentucky, Kentucky yeah. were really I, good to me. I think those are the only desserts we did. We talked about doing desserts next year, but that'd be a heck of a lot of desserts. So <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to come up with ideas, and we're open to your listeners if they check us out and make comments. We've thought about doing a, a – international meal once a month or mm-hmm. we'd be willing to try desserts we're we're open to all that i would say kentucky chess bars were my favorite dessert along this 50 state meal that we've had and then just out it's hard for me in indiana we were there t- two years ago maybe in a lake house maybe one year and they have something called sugar pie mm-hmm. down there yeah it's kind of like a custard pie that was really tasty yeah yeah, sure. And have you done many things other than the the pulled pork? Any of these things that you've tried um, out on the smoker that you traditionally would not have? We have had some fun on the smoker. I can let Sarah talk yeah, about that. Yeah, not for the state meals, but, but not for the state. But meals. just yeah. for fun, like we've done chicken wings and we did like a dragon eggs. If you've ever seen those, like you know the They're like little bacon stuffed wrap, meatloaf. meatloafs. Oh yeah, stuff with jalapenos and cheese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, I'm interested because sometimes you smoke just regular food like a casserole yeah. or something. So yeah. Yeah. I absolutely. am interested in some of that. I listened to that to the tomato one and I'm like, yep, I need to try that yeah. stuffed tomato. Yeah. 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 They're they're awesome. Um that yeah, that those work out really well. And um and you guys have a, a video that is about to go by. I mean, just about to hit a million views. And it's one that it got my attention because I want to try it on the on the smoker, and that was a chicken cobbler with the red lobster biscuit crust. That, that yeah, that's so it's good. It's about to get hit a hundred thousand. We didn't or, want to. Oh, a hundred thousand. Okay, I'm. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but come on, help us get to a million. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we'll we'll have you get there. We'll do our best anyway. There was a time I would make you know some like viral recipes, and William would be be like, okay, that's enough of those recipes because they're not always good. But that one is good. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I, I was seeing it and seeing it, and I'm like, I think I'm going to try that. And it worked out, I guess. Yeah, like absolutely. Also, people like it. Some people think it's a salt bomb, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Always going to have people that have their opinions. <laughs> That's okay. I sure. was going to tell you one thing on the smoker that we did that was really interesting. You, I'm sure you could do it there with different items, but one time in my church when I had enough sight to do this, we took an um, excursion out on Lake Michigan and oh, caught yeah. some lake trout and Mm -hmm. coho and various things and we brought those lake trout home they were nice fatty fish and smoked those and that was wonderful Uh, in fact they were so good that people that caught lake trout were bringing them over to our house asking (laughs) them to smoke (laughs) i was getting to be a pro at the like soaking them in salt and letting them dry out yeah Yeah. oh wow that was really tasty well my wife and i just got back from roaring river which you guys mentioned earlier uh, yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago, and so we've got some trout that we're going to be smoking pretty soon. So, 
Um, it's yeah. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So you froze them and you're going to smoke them later. Yeah. Yep. So oh, good. That's yeah, good to know. that'll be great. That's good to know. Yeah, you have to yeah. make a video on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, um, and uh, yeah, we we've been doing we've been grilling a few things, smoking some crappie, and um, we did uh, oh uh, we did a walleye, and that turned out really well, and uh, yeah, we're gonna do the trout, and and I think I've got some trout videos from a few years back uh, on on the YouTube channel, but we'll we'll probably end up doing another one for sure, so. We got a hot spot up here for bullheads, so I think we might try that next spring. Okay, awesome. Well, what what uh, you guys have a recipe that you want to share? So why don't we uh, let's get into that because I'm I'm excited to uh, hear what uh, what the recipe is that you guys are going to be uh, sharing with us today. Sure. Well, what's funny about it is I really wanted William to know the recipe, so I decided to have him make it the other night. And I filmed it. So when when your podcast goes out, we're actually going to to drop this on our page too. Yeah. And normally this would be um, uh, what I call a rhubarb upside down cake. But rhubarb's not in season right now. So we did it with blueberries and strawberries. And honestly, you could do it with any kind of fruit. Um, so why don't you tell them you made it? Well, yeah. <laughs> I know, brother, that you're you're blind. So when I say this, I'm not picking at you. But this is so easy. Even a blind man could do yeah, it. You that's know, right. like yeah, that's right. So I will yeah. say... That the, the first thing is, if you want to use a homemade cake, that's better yet. But you got to remember the person working with it here. That was me. So I used a, a white box mix, just a plain old Pillsbury box mix. And easy, then we easy. dressed it up. Uh, it, honey, can, uh, you can give them the ingredients or something. But basically, the, prepare it as, as uh, the, just like the, box as the box says, with mm -hmm. eggs, oil, and water. And then get that stirred really nice, you know, for two minutes till it's mixed well. And. Pour it into a greased pan, and then we took two cups of strawberries and blueberries. We like both of those, so we mixed those together and sprinkled them evenly over the top of the cake batter. And then we took a cup of heavy cream, and if you want to know what that looks like uh, to the audience, that if you get that small cream at the grocery store, that'll be the size there. So we... We oh yeah before that we did put in some sugar if it were rhubarb we would use a whole cup of sugar because rhubarb is quite tart mm -hmm. but with berries we cut that down to about three quarter cup and we sprinkle that evenly over the whole mixture and then we took the cream and poured a cup of heavy cream over everything evenly so it's all layers so yeah. you, okay you can tell that's easy that's the ingredients <laughs> so then we took a three hundred and fifty degree oven that we had preheated and put that in our stove is pretty efficient and it's newer but it, you can cook it for between 50 and 60 minutes or until it's golden brown our stove uh, finished it in 50 minutes and it looked pretty perfect and it'll come out nice and warm you probably ought to let it rest a few minutes we let it rest about 15 minutes or so and then sarah cut it and then when you cut it the trick to it to make it pretty is to flip your piece over because it's going to be an upside down cake. All those berries and everything's going to sink to the bottom. So then she flipped that over and we served it with a little bit of uh, whipped cream. And it was a really tasty dessert and a nice um, kind of variation on the rhubarb theme when yeah. we had something in season. So whatever you have in season will work. You know. Everything just sort of sinks to the bottom and mm -hmm. the cream makes it almost like a custard. So when you take it out and flip it over, it almost has a custard berry top. So, oh, wow. so that is, yeah. it's pretty easy. It's really tasty. It'd be a great thing if you, you know, know down south where I'm from too down there. A lot of churches have, you know, Baptist mm -hmm. churches have potlucks and stuff. <laughs> It'd be great for that. Or just having somebody over on your front porch to have a piece of cake with you. And um, I know that's as simple as it gets. You have a lot more complex stuff on this channel, but I'm a pretty <laughs> simple guy, and, and that that's one I could make. <laughs> right. No, that's awesome. It sounds amazing. And ha have you ever mixed the rhubarb with strawberries? No, but that sounds really good. Yeah, that because I, I that's one of the the only time I've ever had rhubarb was a strawberry rhubarb pie, mm -hmm. and they they were you know to, together, and yeah, that was that was awesome, but. Um, other than that, I've never had anything with rhubarb. And so, um, so that would be, 
That would that'd be interesting to try it by itself, but then, yeah, mixing it with the rhubarb and strawberries, I think they go really well together. So, awesome. Yeah, well, I yeah, appreciate I that. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, and, and so, William, do you like do you like to cook? Or is this something Sarah just made you do? <laughs> oh, no. In fact, it, it blows my mind when I sometimes I think of, the younger generation are, you know, our son before us dated um, girls that is like, they didn't cook. And I was mm-hmm. like, what? You know, like I grew up, my mom, you know, kind of taught us all that. And I right. enjoyed it and just kind of know how to flavor things. Like, you know, well, this needs to be a little sweeter. Let's try this, you know, and just kind of be creative. I always kind of liked that. I found out that I wasn't any good at it anymore. Was it last year? I wanted to surprise my wife after I was blind. <laughs> And I tried to make her some pancakes, and I I don't even know if you could call them pancakes. They were <laughs> the smoke alarm went off. Smoke alarm did go off. They were super misshapen. Oh, uh, it was a on whole bad thing. But my heart was in the right place. But yes, sure, to yeah. answer your question, I do enjoy uh, cooking, and I'm not just one of those that cooks and leaves. I clean my own mess up too. He is good so. at cleaning up. That's oh good. man, so it was. Not. Hey, now no, then be careful now. That's I don't. <laughs> But you make the rest of us look bad. <laughs> oh, that's why. Well, that's why I do everything outside, so my wife can just go out and hose it all off. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, so tell us again a little bit about the um, you know, how folks can find your YouTube channel and any other ways that uh, or any other social media that you guys are on. Yeah, we're just Gilkey's Limited Adventures, and it's G-U-I. That silent U gets everybody, but it is Gilkey. <laughs> um, same name for our Facebook page. We we put links out there, and we have some of our um, recipes out there, um, but most of everything is on YouTube. Yeah. And if people end up choosing to subscribe, we, are, we just had a threshold for us, a milestone. We did pass our 1,000th subscriber. So we're going to have a little celebration for that, and we're planning to give something away to to people that may want to enter for that through the comments. And you'll see more details on that later. You know, but we are planning to give away something in gratitude to the people that follow us. And yeah. that's a really good point. Like we want to make sure that you know we're using our channel to help people, and we just had a just for fun Dollar Tree date night. I, yeah, I was getting ready to say um, that. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, we we decided that we want, to, um, you know, as many comments as we get up to 200, we're going to donate to our food pantry. So I think it's going to end up being about $200 donation donation to our food pantry. We just want to make sure, like, we're doing good in the world, too, you know, mm-hmm. sure. not just fun, but we want to do some good, too. Yeah, we've been really blessed. So we want to try to bless others the best we can. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's awesome. Very commendable. And I appreciate you guys, your spirit and that and. Uh, I hope folks will go and check out Gilkey's Limited Adventures on YouTube. Uh, we will leave a link in our description below. Guys, thanks for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Good talking with you guys. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was real nice to connect again. I'm yeah. a bit of a fan, so it's kind of nice for me, too. <laughs> yeah. She's a big fan of your radio voice. <laughs> Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. All right. Friends and family well, folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Blind the Grilling Experience. Be sure and go to our website, blindgrilling.com. If you want to email us, info at blindgrilling.com. That is a new email address, info at blindgrilling.com. Still have the Gmail address, but uh, we're going to start directing folks over there as well. Be sure to share out the podcast to all your friends and family. Let them know about what we're doing over here. And remember, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Burning the world keeps turning. Don't worry what you got to do. Because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Fire up the barbecue. Fire up the barbecue.